Okay, so this is part B of the exponential functions test, unit four in the Nelson functions textbook. And in this part of the test, you're asked to do some uh, transformations of exponential functions and some word problems. So let's get right into this lovely part of the test. Um, it's worth a lot of marks, as you can see, 9, 12, 21, 27 marks for these graphs. So you're dealing with three different graphs here. We'll give the equations for the functions, and you're asked to give a description, which means state the transformations, state the mapping rule. So let's start with that. We'll do, uh, we'll do them one at a time so that it, uh, it comes back to kind of repeat. So when I look at this function, I remember that the original function f and x, or the parent function for this graph, would have been 2 to the x. Any changes to x are going to be up here. So you can see there's a negative here. So it's a negative x, and this would be a change to y. So the same thing here, here's my x changes, here's my y changes. Here's my x change, here's my y change. So remember, x changes will all be up in the exponent part. So the first thing I can see, because there's a negative here, that means there's going to be a reflection. Now, students always have trouble deciding what way it's reflection. It's a reflection about I'm changing x's from positive to negative, so I always do something like this, right? If I'm going x from positive to negative, I'm reflecting about the y-axis, reflection about the y-axis, and the minus two means a vertical shift down to units. So you're probably getting pretty good with these transformations down to units. Okay, so that's set up. Now state the mapping rule. Make sure you're careful when you're answering questions. You don't miss part of it. So mapping rule says, I start with x and y, and what do I have to do to my x's to get this graph? So the only thing that's happening here is I'm going to make the x's negative, so negative x, and the y I'm going to subtract 2. Okay. Rewrite the equation in function notation, where the function f of x is 2 to the x. So that means that my function now is going to be y equals f at negative x, because that's what I have up here. So I had 2x, so if I had 2, negative x here would be 2 to the negative x, and then subtract 2, and that's all. It's much easier than people think that part is. Okay, state the domain and range. Well, sometimes before you do the domain and range, it might be a good idea to graph it. Although you should know that for x here, it doesn't matter what I put in for an x, I'm still going to get an answer. I can do two to a negative power, because you know that just means one over it. Um, if I put in a negative value for x, I'd have, like say I put in negative five, I've had two to the power of five. So it looks like, and it is, that the domain is simply x is an element of real numbers. And the range, the minus 2 means that we have taken the asymptote. Now remember that the asymptote, I'll do a little sketch here for you, the asymptote of, of just um, 2 to the x would be like this. The asymptote is always y equals 0, but with a vertical shift down two, I have moved the asymptote down two places, so the whole function gets shifted down two, and so now the range, instead of being greater than zero, is going to be greater than negative two. So I'm going to say r is the set of y's such that y is greater than negative two. Not equal to, because it doesn't touch this line. Remember, that's your asymptote. Um, so the domain, the range, and the equation, the asymptote, so asymptote is y equals minus 2. Now, sketch, now, if you had a little better, um, I think it's on the back side here. So I did give some table of values here. Unfortunately, it got flipped over to the, the next page. 
So here, what I would do is I would start with my um, basic, uh, you know, like two to the power of one. So we had y equals two to the x. So when I put in two, I would get four. If I put in three, I would have eight. If I put in um, negative one, I would have a half. Okay, so I have, I have three different values here. Sometimes um, you can choose what you want, but it's just to help you get a better sketch for the function. So if I do, um, if I do the mapping rule, which I had over here, so minus x and y minus two. So I had x, y, oops, my thing's moving go to minus x and y minus two. So here's my parent function of two to the x, that's my, my parent that I've transformed. So I'm going to go two, four is going to become minus two and two. And three, eight is going to become minus three and six. And minus one is going to become one and a half minus two is going to be minus one and a half. And then I can use those points back on the graph over here. Sorry, I have to flip, but that's just the way it is. So I had um, got them already. Minus two and two. So minus two and two. And I had. Um, I probably should have done zero. Zero would have been a good one, right? Two to the zero is one, and that's going to give me zero, and one minus two is minus one. So zero and minus one is another point. That's here. And I know I have an asymptote here. I'm going to label it y equals minus two, and the graph, uh, what was another point that I might have used here? Minus three and positive six. Minus three and positive six. So my graph's coming down like this, and that should make sense to you. And it's going to go like that. So what we've done here, and you can double check your work, we have a reflection about the y-axis. So the graph is going this way, and now it's going this way. Another way you could look at that is to note that two to the negative x, two to the negative x, that's the same thing as one over two to the x, right, a half power. So it's a decay function, and that makes sense for our graph. So use your head and think of all the things that you've learned and make sure, you know, double check your work. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so for the second graph, we have state the, the uh, transformations first. So I have a negative sign out front here. Now remember, in the correct order, always means just left to right. right? So negative means we're uh, reflecting. This time it's reflecting the y values. Remember, because anything out here and here is a change to y. So reflection about the x-axis this time. Okay, remember if I do a Y, if I'm making my Ys go from here to here, here's my mirror line. It's a reflection about the x-axis. The second thing, this two here, now remember this is with x's. Um, x's are weird, so two means one half compression. So compression horizontal. I should have said horizontal first, but too late. Horizontal compression by a factor of one half. <clears throat> Losing my voice today. I am not sick. And the third thing, this plus seven, that's a vertical shift up seven units. Didn't leave a lot of room here, did I? And finally, um, what is the mapping rule? So I say, well, X and Y are going to go to what am I doing to my x's? I'm multiplying them by a half, or you could divide by two, right? That's the same thing. A half x or x over two, same, same calculation. And I have a negative y plus seven. That's negative y plus seven, outside. Rewrite the equation in function form. So this time it's going to be y is equal to negative f at two x 
plus 7. And the domain and range. Okay, so my domain still is going to be real numbers. But my range, I have to think about. And first thing I might say down here is what is my asymptote? So remember the asymptote is just this number out here. So it's minus 2, it's 7, it's 0. Right? So y equals 7, there's my asymptote. And my range, um, again, you might want to graph it first because maybe it's not obvious to you. But because it's a reflection, if I do a quick sketch here, so if I start with this graph and then I reflect it and I shift it up 7, it's going to go like this, right? Here's y equals 7. Am I on the, are you seeing this? Yes. Okay, so it's going to be like y equals 7 up here, so it's going to go down. So that means my range is going to be um, y is less than 7. So I'll put that in here and we'll see it again when we, um, when we graph it. y such that y is less than 7. And you could say y is an element of real numbers, but we're okay. Okay, so some points. I'm just going to put them down here because I don't want to flip the page over again. So let's go back to the, um, we had when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y was 2. When x is 2, y was 4. Remember, these are just values from 2 to the x. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. We'll do one more, 3 and 8. Maybe we should have done the negative 1, 2. And now I'm going to apply the mapping rule. So 0 times a half is just 0. And 1 um, minus 1, so it's minus y plus 7. I better write that here. I'm going to make a mistake. Minus y plus 7 and x over 2. x over 2 minus y plus 7. Okay, so when I put in 1, minus 1 plus 7 is 6. So 0 and 6 is a point on my graph. 1, 2 is going to go to a half. And minus 2 plus 7 is 5. So a half and 5. And 2, 4 is going to go to 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And minus 4 plus 7 is 3. So 1 and 3. And 3 and 8 are going to go to 3 halves. And minus 8 plus 7 is minus 1. So 3 halves and minus 1. And I should have done one over here. Let's do minus 2. When x is minus 2, y is equal to a quarter. Right? 2 to the minus 2 is 1 quarter. And so minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. And a quarter, minus a quarter plus seven, is going to be six and three quarters, right? So minus one and six and three quarters, so about here. And my asymptote is going to be here. That's y equals seven. My graph is going to approach that and come down through these values. Having trouble seeing today. There we go. All done. Okay, and the next one, let's get back up to the top here. 2 times 2 to the 2x, 2 to the x plus 1. <clears throat> I've, I've seen many students decide they're going to multiply these together. No, 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 no. This is, leave this alone. This is 2 times. So this is a change to y. Your x changes are still up here. So my first transformation is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. <clears throat> vertical stretch by factor of 2. I'm going to sound weird here. And my horizontal is going to be a, a shift, horizontal shift to the left. Remember, x's are weird. Horizontal shift left one unit. My mapping rule, x and y go to what am I doing to my x's? I'm doing an x minus 1, and I have two y's. Okay, rewrite in function notation. Well, this is my f at x was 2 to the x, so I have 
f to the x plus 1, because that's what I have for my exponent, and I have 2 out front, and that's all you need to write, 2, f of x plus 1. Um, now, um, oh, I didn't state, oh, oh, that was here. Okay, the domain, same, x is an element of real numbers. And the range, now this one, because there's no reflection, it's just vertical stretch and shifts, the range is st still going to be um, y is greater than zero because we're just shifting and moving it and stretching it, right? So now all I have to do is sketch this. I'm going to put my asymptote in here, dotted line so you can see it. And then I'm going to do some points again. So my mapping rule was x minus 1 and 2y. So I'll, I'll just use these points here. So I had 0, 1, so now I have minus, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, minus 1 and 2. And 1, 2 goes to 0 and 4. And 2, 4 is going to go to 1 and 8. And that's probably enough, but we'll do we'll do the negative one. Minus two minus one is going to be minus three and a quarter times two y is going to be one half. Okay, so now I just have to sketch that in here. So I have minus one and two, I have zero and four, I have one and eight, and you can see how it's being stretched nicely, and I have minus three and a half. So it's going like, I can't see my points, like this. There. So we've done all the graphing, and that gives you a wonderful 27 points or something if you can do that. Okay. So on the next side of the page, we have some word problems. So the first one says, a strain of yeast cells doubles under certain conditions every 40 minutes. I was really nice and gave the formulas. Hopefully your teacher will give you some formulas. If there were 25 cells initially, how many will there be in five hours? How many will there be in n hours? Okay, so we just need to figure out, first of all, I would like to write down everything I already, I already know. So I'm using um, doubling. So this is the formula I want. So it could be because you can see it's two times two to some power. So that means doubling. This would be a half life and this would be a finance question, right? So you might want to remind yourself. Okay, so I'm going to use this formula. Nt equals n zero. That means the number at time zero doubled to the time that has passed divided by the doubling time. So in other words, if four hours went by and it doubles every two hours, it would double twice. Okay, so initially there were 25 cells. So the number at time zero is 25. Um, how many, many were there be in five hours? And this says it's doubled every 40 minutes. So you need to be really careful. Minutes, hours, make sure you're using the same. So the time here is five hours, but I want it in minutes. So that's going to be 300 minutes. All right, make sure you read your question carefully. And it doubles every 40 minutes. So the doubling is 40 minutes. And now I'm all set to plug that in. So the number at 300 minutes, make sure you don't write T again if you're gonna plug in 300. The number at 300 minutes is gonna be 25 times two to the power of the time that's gone by. So that's 300 over 40. And this is where you're gonna get out your calculator. And if you do your calculator, you get approximately 4,525.4. So now you're not going to say there's 0.4 cells or a half of a cell. You'll say therefore approximately 4,525 cells after five hours. 
Oh, I didn't answer the other part of the question. How many will there be in n hours? So the number at n hours is just, we're just plugging in n for our time. So n hours, um, n hours. Now you can't write 40 minutes here because this is in n hours. So 40 minutes, 40 minutes out of 60 minutes, that's two thirds, right? So you can either write it as two thirds here or you're probably better to write it as three over two. So I've just converted to make sure that my doubling time matches the question which asked you for n hours. Okay, number eight, health, health officials found traces of radium F beneath the local library. Oh no, after three hours they observed that a certain amount of the substance had decayed to one root 32 of its original mass. Determine the half-life of radium F in minutes. Okay, so everything's very nice here. This is three hours, we want minutes, so we have to be careful, make sure that we've got everything set up. So the mass at time t, so we're going to use the mass formula. The mass at time t equals the initial mass it's a half-life, so it's decaying, the half-life, to T over H, and we don't know what H is, we're trying to solve for H. So I'm going to write down what I know. So the mass at time T is 1 over root 32. Now this isn't actually, the, this is a percentage of the mass. So that means that mass at time 0 is going to be 1, right? So this is like 100%, and this is 1 over root 32 of it. So that's, the, that's what you need to figure to start with. We need a 1 here. And um, what else do we know? We have 3 hours. 3 hours is 180 minutes. So now I plug in my what I have here. So 1 over root 32 is going to be equal to 1 times a half to the power of 180 over h. And now you're going to say, oh my god, how am I going to solve this? 1 half. Now, there's three ways you can do this, maybe more. Three that I could think of. The first one would be, figure this out as a decimal, use um, guess and check method until you get something that's close to it. That's really tedious. The second way is to take a look at what you have over here. And you know that the root of 32, that is a base of 2. That's 2 to the fifth power, right? And I have a half here. So if I can write it all in terms of half powers, because this is a half here, if I could make this as 1 over, so 1 over let me write it over here. 1 over root 32 is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the power 5. That's 32 to the half power, right? So that means that this is equal to um, 1 over 2 to the 5 halves. Now, if this is... Let me write this in here now. So um, this, this exponent, if I can write this as a half, so this is a half to the five halves. So this is one half to the five halves, right? One half to the five halves is this. Just a minute here. I had this all worked out. 1 over 5, a half to the 5 halves is equal to a half to the 180 over h. So now I can say that 5 halves is equal to 180 over h, and I can solve for h, and I get 72. So that means my half power Yeah, the half power is 72 hours. So 
if you plug that back, or it's not 72 hours, it's minutes, right? The half power, the half life is 72 minutes. I'm losing my mind here. The half, half life is 72 minutes. So if you plugged back in here, so if you put in 72 here, do 180 divided by 72 and do a half to that power, you'll get the same answer as one over the root of 32. Okay, so maybe I could explain this a little better here. Um, I'm just thinking here for a minute, guys, just give me a second. So I'm thinking this would be two, a half to the five halves, the same thing, yeah. Two to the fifth, 32 is two to the fifth and it's raised to the half power. So two to the five halves. And that means I have half to the five halves and a half to the 180 over eight. Okay, I'm okay with it. Now the other way you could do it is you could use logarithms. I don't know, maybe your teacher might've shown you how to use logs for some of these because you don't do it till grade 12, but if you start with this equation here, the rule is if you take the log of both sides of the equation, so if I had the log of one over root 32, that's going to be equal to, now when you take the log of this side, it means you can write the 180 over h in front. It's one of the laws of exponent of logarithms times the log of a half. And you can see that if you, these numbers can be calculated on a, on a calculator. So you can just plug them in. So you'd have the log of one over square root 32 divided by the log of 0.5 is equal to 180 over H. And then once you, um, evaluate this, you'll end up getting the same thing of 72. Okay, so that's, um, like I said, you could use trial and error. I did trial and error first to see how long it would take me and it took me about five minutes. Um, this, recognizing that 32 is the same thing as a base two number, and then that makes it a very easy calculation, or if you're familiar with logarithms. Okay, so the very last question before the bonus, which I'll show you, it says Nada deposits 5,000 in an account that pays 10% per annum for 10 years. This is a very easy question. I think I would have made it much harder second time around, but you hadn't done finance at this point, so maybe it was meant to be a basic question. Okay, so this is your finance question. This is um, growth money growth. So you have an amount at time zero, a final amount, I plus, one plus the interest rate as a decimal to the power of n. So here my i is 10%, which is 0 0.10. My n is 10 years. My initial amount is $5,000. So the amount you'll have is 5,000 times 1.1 to the power of 10 just like that, very easy question, and you get $12,968.71. Don't forget to give two decimal places when you're dealing with money. So you would say, therefore, blah, blah, I'm not gonna write out your concluding statement. What is the growth rate? The growth rate is 10%, 10% per annum, that's your growth. Um, the initial amount is $5,000. That's what you put in the bank. And see how many growth periods are there. For this, there are 10 growth periods. Now, of course, if this had been semi-annual, you would have had in 10 years, 20 growth periods. Or if it was quarterly, then you'd have 40 growth periods. Okay, so um, that's all you had to do for that. And the last question, if you want something challenging, show all your work, give final answer in exact, simplified form. So I have ooh, lots of mess here, right? So the first thing I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to simplify this part here. Always try to simplify things as much as possible. I'm also going to get rid of this radical in the same step. 
because I know that's to the half power because it is a square root function. So here, right now, I'm going to do this and I'm going to rewrite this. So 3 minus 20, 17 over 27, 3 is 81 over 27. Right? That goes in there three times. So this is 81 minus 17. 81 minus 17, that's going to give you 64 over 27. And this is all to the minus one third. Then I'm going to add one to it. Make sure you don't lose things along the way. And this is all to the um, to the half power. Oh, no, this all is to the minus one half. So it's minus one half power. Okay, be careful because there's a minus one here, and then this got raised to the half. Okay, so. Maybe I should have done one more step for you in there. Maybe I will. Just so you say, how did she get that number there? Let's go back, just I'll write it like this, minus one, and then it was to the half. So because this is all within this bracket, I only have to do this operation here. Okay, so in the next step, I'm gonna do a couple of things. So um, first of all, this is a negative exponent. Negative exponent, I can make it a positive exponent by flipping the fraction All right so maybe we'll do we'll do a couple more steps here so I'm going to do this and I'm going to say I'm going to make this to the one-third by flipping this this round bracket to the third power now it's to the one-third plus one and then I'm going to multiply this. So this is to the minus a half. Now, do I have too many brackets here now? This to the half, I don't need this one out here. Yes, I do, it's still all to the one. Okay, so now I'm going to do, let's put another one here like that. Let's do this part here. So I'm doing the cube root of 27 over 64. The cube root of 27 is three. The cube root of 64 is four. I'm going to add one to that and then it's going to be to the minus half. So three quarters plus four quarters is seven quarters. So I have seven quarters to the minus one half or four over seven to the half power. I keep flipping these fractions around, but it's easy to do that way. Now the square root of four is two, but I can't do the square root of seven um, nicely, exact, we want an exact value. So the square root of four is two, and the square root of seven is root seven. And there you are, there's the end of your part two of the exponential functions test. I hope that was really helpful for you. Please like, subscribe, share to help increase the channel's visibility. I thank you for watching, and good luck on your unit test.